sometimes it can be nice to load our CSS files from, well, a separate file. Uh, the reason for that probably is going to be that you're going to get better auto completion from your uh, from your editor. So, for example, if we take a look at our styles here, H1 color orange, uh, the VS Code has no idea what to do with this. It doesn't know that these are styles, so it's not going to um, to give us nice little colors. It's not going to auto complete what this is. Uh, so it'd be nicer to like maybe have this out in a separate file. So let's create a main, like a um, main dot CSS. Uh, I need to create this inside of source here. And now if I do something like, uh, let's set the color um, for each ones. Let's set the color to maybe Maybe this aqua color. Uh, we can just set everything's font size. To maybe like 100 pixels. Nice and big. Should be fairly obvious that this is this is happening. Uh, we can even see it set this uh, the P tag. It's red right now. Let's set it to green. Okay, so three things they want to change. We now get the VS Code is helping us out with this, so it's much nicer. Now, if I uh, we're going to come back into our component here, um, I can't actually do anything inside of app to load this. Uh, the reason is because this is all going to run well at runtime in the browser. So if I do anything to try to like load something from a file inside of there, it's the browser trying to load it. And while there are technically ways that you can have the browser load something from a file, that's not what we want to do. We want to have this available to us at compile time. Uh, so we're going to use a const. So const, uh, this is going to be maybe like our style. Um, you can do it like style file. Uh, this is going to be a stir or at least a static stir. Um, the compiler will tell us exactly what it needs to be. And then we're going to use a macro uh, called include stir, which comes with core. Uh, this, we're going to tell it just where to find it, which is main.css. Now, include stir is looking in the same directory that the file that we're calling this in is. So if, for example, we're creating an atomic component that's in atoms here, uh, the style sheet would have to be inside of there. So this might make it so that we have to have another folder for every single uh, component that we make. So like maybe another folder for button. And inside of there, we can have um, the, C the, the JavaScript, the HTML in one file, and then the, uh, the style sheet in a separate file. That's going to be very like um, how React is done, um, or at least like if you're not doing the entire CSS in JavaScript React. Okay, so that gives us our uh, stir file now. So now it's yelling at us that it's not being used. Let's now update this we can't just do style like this macro because this is expecting a a hard-coded string in there so instead we're going to reach into a uh, style stylist and pull out style to use stylist style oh you're um oh if i have like if you have errors in here like something like that it um, autocomplete gets a little bit upset at you. Let's try this again. So we're going to use style, new, and then pass in this style file. Uh, it does return a result, so we're going to unwrap you. That gives us the same exact style, which means that when we apply it to this class, it's going to be perfectly fine. I'm going to go ahead and remove this class from the p tag so we can see uh, our changes uh, fully in here. Now let's head over here and we'll see very big text, the light blue H1 and the green uh, P tag. So now it looks like this has been updated. 
Now, it'll be interesting to see if I change you, so maybe let's do um, something like yellow-green, and I save you. That auto updates. I didn't have to hit refresh on it. Uh, Trunk is detecting that this file is changing because it is being pulled into Rust, and then up, you know, refreshes the screen. So this is an alternate way of uh, creating our styles and um, getting a little bit of help from our browser. Uh, for our course, uh, I've actually been preferring the style sheet inside of the component. Um, uh, it's possible that if we get into something that's a little bit more complex, it might be nice to use the browser, oh, sorry, use a separate file. But I usually end up using the browser's dev tools to uh, inspect like the styles, Let's see, down here, for example, and be able to sort of like manipulate them around. Once I know exactly what I want to do, I can bring it back into the file and update them here. And I, I don't really miss this too much. Um, so anyways, with that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.